Hi, thanks for clicking on my video. My name is Beth Ann of Beth Ann Stamps, and this week we are looking at Daisy Garden. I love the stamp set, um, probably because daisies are my favorite flower. And we are pairing it with Biggest Wishes for the sentiments. I think these sentiments are big and bold and clear. So those are what we're working on today. Let me bring you in a sample of what we're making. A few weeks ago, I had an in-person stamp camp, and this is one of the cards we made. So this one was a Knight of Navy, and we also used the ta um, tailor-made tags. This uh, second to the smallest tag is the perfect size for these sentiments. Now this one, of course, I did also pull in some retired products. The Daisy Lane stamp set, if you have it, works good on the inside here. And this one had some denim ribbon that I thought worked really well. But today, we're going to make one in Tahitian Tide. We're going to start with a card base that is cut at five and a half, four and a quarter, scored, oh, I'm sorry, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Hopefully I got that right. And then I have two other pieces here. Um, they are both five and a quarter by four for the inside and the outside of the card. We're gonna start with the outside. And for this one, we are gonna use the Stamparatus. This is a rather large stamp and sometimes they need to be stamped multiple times. So this product lets you do that. Honestly, if it wasn't for this, I probably would not still be stamping. I had such a hard time getting clear stamped images when I first started stamping. And so it drove me crazy. I was ready to give up until this came out. All right, so we're using Tahitian Tide ink. I am going to take another stamp, put it underneath the lid because that's about the right size so this doesn't give. That way you can use some ink on there. We'll get that stamped up. Now when I close this, I'm just gonna bring in a little tool I found on Amazon gives me nice even pressure. You really want to get near these hinges. Sometimes that's the harder part to get stamped. All right, let's take a look. There we go. I think that looks beautiful. I am going to clean off the stamp because we are going to use it with a different color ink here for our second cart today. All right. This will give that some time to dry. out of the way for now. All right, now for this, the ribbon I want to use for this is also that Tahitian Tide Glitter Ribbon. I love these new in colors. I use this tape, the stamp and seal, to run a piece of tape on the sides to hold my ribbon in place. So I'm just going to put the ribbon there, bring it around. Actually went out a little lower. So this allows me to let me trim that off. There we go. Let's see, maybe down here. I think that'll work. Come on. But I want to twist it. My stamp and sew isn't as far down. Let's put it somewhere on there. Stamp and so really is sticky. There we go. These cards are really nice. They're a very easy card to make, and you can make them in multiple colors. So they would make a very nice um, gift, a set of cards. You could set them as happy birthdays, hello friend, thank you cards, and then gift a complete set of them in multiple colors. To somebody for a holiday, a birthday, and then they can in turn spread the joy of sending handmade cards out. All right, so one other thing on the front that we'll do, um, we need to do a tag. This is again is the tailor-made tag. Since this is photopolymer, I'm going to bring in um, my pressing, oh my god, piercing mat. 
having trouble with my words today. I guess that's not unusual. So we're going to make a happy birthday card. So I'm going to bring in the happy. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the way here to line this up. There we go. And then I'm going to attach this with dimensionals. I like to stick my thumbnail down in these to sort of lift the edge so I can peel them off easier. Well, at least in theory. There we go. Throw that away. This will help hold down that ribbon on the front. And then I pre made some bows out of um, just the Baker's twine. And this happens to be in the white, and we will use a glue dot on this one. The glue dot stuck to my thumb instead of... <laughs> it does not want to let go of me. Come on. There we go. No. Jeez. That glue dot is not cooperating. All right, let's do the inside. I love how these are in these solid colors. I think they are so, so pretty. Grab me inside of my card. Here we go. So I am going to do the birthday. Let me get my birthday stamp. I don't have it loaded on a stamp block. Oh, I must have it on a stamp block. Ah, there it is. On the other side of my desk. Okay. So we're going to do birthday. And I'm going to put it here in the middle. Now, this is that stamp from the retired Daisy Lane stamp set. So when I do this, I'm going to stamp it off so it shows up a little bit lighter. So it looks like it's in the background there. And there we go. That is all I am going to put on the inside of this card. There is plenty of room to write the name it's going to in a little note below. I'll just put this right here in the center. Like I said, a very simple card. But I really like it. Um, let me show you some other colors that I have done this in. So we have um, Night of Navy, Tahitian Tide. This is Starry Sky and Flirty Flamingo. And I just really love them. Um, I'm also going to show you on the next card. On this one, if you don't have the retired Daisy Lane, you can just stamp part of the daisy garden on it and this is a thanks i put no other sentiment in here just the flowers so that i could put a personal thank you note but wouldn't these be beautiful in a box as a gift set and you can use any of the colors in the stampin up line all right let's go on to our second card it's a little bit different it's still using the daisy garden but i'm putting it on crumb cake and I love to use colored pencils with the crumb cake, especially that white. This is a very subtle card. Um, I really enjoyed making it. So let's bring in the kit that we're going to use to make this. This time I'm doing a top folding card. This one was a side. You can do either. I just happen to have this piece already cut out. So this one is the four and a quarter by 11 scored at that five and a half. So that's our card base. And then we'll do the inside of the card in a little while. I wanna make sure that I have the outside of the card. Let's see, I'm trying to see which one that goes to. Why am I having trouble here? Ah, this is it. Grabbed up the wrong piece. So this one is cut at 
three and three quarters by five. The white that we want to get this nice little frame to show off those white daisies is an eighth of an inch larger. So that's five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. But all of this information will be in the link below to the coordinating blog. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring back the Stamparatus and I'm going to put this card in here. Now, um, you may wonder why do I have this upside down, right? And the reason is, is because, as I said earlier, sometimes st stamping next to the hinge, you don't get a really clean image. So I was more concerned with the daisy showing up than the stems at the bottom. So that is why I have it mounted this way. Just a little trick that I do. So I'm going to bring in crumb cake ink. And again, we'll ink this up very well. And then bring it in. Wrap that over there to get a nice crisp image. We'll take a look. Oh, I like it. I think we are just fine with that one. So let me clean the stamp off. Thank goodness for baby wipes without alcohol in them, right? There we go. Now, how I did this card is I brought in some of the colored pencils. I have, these are the watercolor pencils. I have white. And so what I did is I colored here with the white. Let's just, uh, zoom in a little if we can here. Maybe that'll help. Okay, so the white really shows up on this crumb cake. I think the crumb cake is a great neutral color. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way here. So I'm not going to color this whole card, but I wanted to show you how I did some of these. So I went through and I colored all the flowers white. And I don't mind that it covers up some of the stamped image. I think it mutes it, and that's what I wanted. You could, if you wanted those dark lines to show again after you colored it, you could put it back into the Stamparatus and stamp it again. But that's not the look I was going for. This is Daffodil Delight. So I colored the inside of the flowers with that. Then I pulled two greens. I have a garden green and an granny apple for some highlights. And I just sort of went through, colored the leaves. Um, coloring is to be relaxing, right? And then I just went back over to highlight some of the areas in that granny apple green. And then I came back with the gray. This is the basic gray watercolor. I wanted some depth to my flowers from the center. So I went around just around the center of the flowers and did a few little lines to sort of give it depth. Now, what I also like to do is to bring in the blender pen, especially around the leaves. That sort of helps them cover up those pencil lines and blend those two colors together that I was using. I'll clean off my blender brush and then I wanted to do the same with the gray. Just go in and sort of push that color out a little and it gives you a little bit of depth. And so rather than you having to watch me color this whole thing, I've gone ahead and already had another one ready. So you can see it brings out a little depth. So let's go back to making our card. So I'm going to mount this on this white. I wanted that little pop of white around the edges to bring out the white and the daisies. Let's get this centered on here. Oh, wrong one. Where is the right one? I only wanted it to be an eighth of an inch bigger. I picked up the inside of the card there. There we go. Now, I also wanted to put a ribbon on here. And part of the um, Happy Forest set and then the annual catalog is 
some crumb cake and old olive. So I pulled out the old olive. Now on this one, I just put it around the, the brown, but this one we're gonna do it on both. And again, I attached the ribbon the same way with some stamp and seal. And you know what, you look out in nature and there's multiple colors of green. So I wasn't concerned that I colored it with granny apple and garden green and used the old olive. Nature has many colors and many variety of colors. All right, so let's mount this to my card front. There it is. I just really love how crumb cake looks with that white on it. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring in my tag. Again, I'm gonna bring in my piercing mat since I'm using the photopolymer stamps. And we're gonna bring in Hello. And we're gonna stamp that in crumb cake. Let me move these pencils out of the way. All right, there we have a hello. Now for this one, I'm bringing in the Baker's Twine Essential Pack because it has crumb cake twine in it. And so I'm just gonna cut a piece of this off and I'm going to tie it directly onto the tag. And I have to tell you, I am extremely excited because on the first of July, around the first of July, the new mini catalog comes out. Can't wait for you to see it. It's absolutely gorgeous, but one of my favorite things that I have been waiting for Stampin' Up! to bring out has been an embossing kit. I got this tray. It comes with an embossing buddy, a brush, and my favorite thing, reverse tweezers. And these are a ceramic edge um, to help. And then once you've embossed, you open up this little part and you can pour all your embossing powder back into your embossing cup. But I also like these to help me tie a ribbon. You know, we always fight with trying to hold it in place. These reverse tweezers, I can just put that right there. It holds for me. So then I can tie this ribbon or twine. So they're perfect for that. So those will be available in the new mini catalog. It's also going to be celebration time again in um, July and August. So be prepared for that. There's some really neat things in the celebration catalog for you. I'm looking for my dimensionals again. All right. There we go. Again, I'm going to try to pop up the edge so it's easier to pull off. Dimensionals are a wonderful thing, but boy, are they sometimes a pain to work with. Okay. There we go. Hello. I'll trim up. Oh. Don't pull out. I didn't get it tight enough. Come on, there we go. Now I'll trim these off. Now let's do the inside of this card. I started to put glue there, so I wanna make sure that I put that side down. And I'm just gonna use friend here. Make sure I have it right side up. I'm gonna put it towards the right side of my card in the middle. I like offset greetings. I think it adds some character. I'm going to bring back in the Stamparatus because remember I said I wanted to have that um, full daisy inside. So I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna remember to put it in upside down since my stamp is upside down. And I want it to fill in probably about there. So let me put some magnets down and put my stamp pad under there 
open up some crumb cake. I'm only going to stamp the side here since that's what's going to stamp on there. There we go. Oop, didn't get the bottom. That's why we love the Stamparatus, right? Wow, that really does not want to stamp there, does it? All right, well, I think that'll do. I did have a little bit of glue on the back of that. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I, um, my favorite value of color are typically pastels, so, and soft colors. So for me, I would love to get this card in the mail. There we go. Hello, friend. Let me clean some things off. So those are our cards this week. And really, as I said, for these, you can do them in multiple colors. I did want to point out um, for Flirty Flamingo, of course, right now we do not have any Flirty Flamingo ribbon. But you can make your own color ribbon. I brought in, I know it's here. <laughs> oh, is, oh, here we go. It's uh, like a... a I forget what they're calling it. It's called a uh, white glitter organdy ribbon. Now, when I first looked at this, it does have those iridescents in it, and they sort of looked pink. But what I did, I'll bring in a piece of paper. I just want to show you this real quick. If you have the Stampin' Blends, these are alcohol markers, you can color this ribbon with them. This is the dark one. And there you go. Now you've made whatever color ribbon you want. And that's what I did here. And it looks wonderful. So you have that option. So there we go. We did Daisy Garden with Biggest Wishes. And we made an array of colors. I think they are all beautiful. Anybody would love to get those in a kit. And even this one, right? With the crumb cake where you use your watercolored pencils so i really hope that you enjoyed the video this week as always i really appreciate you taking time out of your week and your day to watch my videos um, i would greatly appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and also if you'd like please hit that subscribe button so you get notified i try to get a video out every wednesday at 8 a.m eastern time so thank you and if you're in need of a demonstrator i would love to do that for you i'm happy to answer any questions you may have about stampin up products please reach out to me you can reach out to me via facebook on beth ann stamps uh, page on my website at bethannstamps.com or leave me a comment here. I check those. I'd be happy to get in touch with you. So again, thank you. Have a fabulous rest of your week. Bye-bye.